Hi everyone, this is your first lecture that I'm going to have you watch prior to coming to class on February 3rd, uh, just to make sure that we stay on top of material. Hopefully it shouldn't take you too long to get through this lecture. A lot of this should be repeat from your research methods. So the purpose of this, or of this lecture is to really make sure that you're on target for selecting your research topic. And to do that we have to understand what the definition of research is. You should remember back from your Research 610 class, research is defined as a structural process of investigating facts or theories or a method of answering questions or solving problems in a systematic or objective manner. Some of the key terms that you really need to catch here is the systematic, which means that we have a clear A, B, C, D path. Objective means that if we were to replicate it, we'd get the same outcome. And then also the whole method, and that brings us into the key term that we're going to work on this semester, which is the idea of applying the scientific method to whatever your research question is. So, just to get a visual, and again, hope to review for you, the scientific method can be both considered linear and cyclical. It starts off with identifying a problem, and that's where many of you are probably at, is really trying to figure out what is it the problem that you plan on doing. Throughout your Research 610 class, and if you've decided to choose a new topic, you'll be working in the first half of this class on reading relevant literature. For some of you, especially in physical education, sports psychology, psychology, that's going to be theoretical literature. Those of you in the harder or in like exercise physiology and strength and conditioning, that's going to be empirical. You're going to do a little bit of both and use inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning to come up with a testable hypothesis. Something that you can actually do either through qualitative research or quantitative research and actually test the outcome. Throughout, or during the second half of the semester, we'll conduct, make operational definitions. We'll def develop a method section where you will identify your subjects or participants, your measurements, your procedure, your statistical analysis and design. And then the goal is after this class that you'll conduct your data collection and statistical analysis, write up your findings and discussion in preparation for your thesis defense. Ideally, though, I did say that seems pretty linear, but research can be cyclical. For most, or for most researchers like me who do it for a living, that last discussion point is going to lead us up to a new problem. And that's why at the end of so many journal articles you're going to see recommendations for future research because it suggests where can we move the research from here. That might be helpful for you if you're trying to determine what problem you need in the first place. You might want to go back to the very end of some recent research articles and see, well, what are people suggesting that we should do next? So what is a hypothesis? A hypothesis, this is one of the major goals that you have to do at the end of your review of lit. A hypothesis is an expected result. So you have to be able to kind of guess based on your research of theoretical and empirical lit what do you think is going to happen. Otherwise said is it's an anticipated solution that's based on theoretical constructs, results of previous research, that's the empirical lit, or past experiences of researchers or observations. It can't be any value judgment, so remember, it cannot be any type of value judgment or abstract phenomenon. It has to be testable. I have to be able to do A, or a and B in my method section and to get an answer for my testable hypothesis. Now, the use of the scientific method and scientific research design provides credibility and validity to your findings. Essentially, what that is saying, what's the credibility and validity, is means that people can both trust it and that it's accurate to your findings. So you have to use both the scientific method and an appropriate research design. Later this semester, after you've conducted your review of lit and you have an idea of what you want to do, you're going to explore the different. We're going to explore the different types of research designs and help you determine which one is most appropriate for your research question. In the process, though, we have to identify what the question is that you're looking for. I want you to remember from the very outset, research has its limitations, and while we will learn a lot about this study, one thing we have to learn is that research never proves anything. There is too much error, there's too many mistakes that we can do, there's too many things that can go wrong, humans are too fickle. Ultimately, the best we can do is support a theory or find evidence to suggest. 
but we will never prove anything. So make sure as you think about whatever assignment you're going to do for me that you never, never, never use the word prove. This is exactly how I mark up a paper that does. These, some of the limitations that I was kind of intimating in that last slide. Limitations that we expect. Complexity in subject matter. For instance, let's say you're doing a study on self-confidence. Self-confidence is a really complex subject. There are a million things that go into our measuring self-confidence. So there's no questionnaire, for instance, something like the Rosenberg Self-Esteem Questionnaire, which is 10 items line. There's no 10 items that can fully measure self-confidence. Therefore, there's going to be problems in that research. Difficulties in observation. There are certain things that are just hard for us to see or hard for us to measure. I can't go up and measure self-confidence by taking a roller to you. I can't necessarily observe your motivation. And even when I'm doing a observing a 1RM test, a, my, it's my best guess, and it can be off by a half kilogram or a kilogram based on the limitations of the... Um, the weights that I have. It could be off by the equation that I'm using. If I'm doing a 3RM to guess how or estimate what a person's 1RM, that's going to have some problems. Then we have difficulties in replication. A major goal of research is that you could do it and do it again with a different sample and have the same outcome as long as the sample had similar characteristics. And if research can't be replicated, then we can't believe that the findings of the first study were credible in the first place. Interaction of the observer and subject participants. You are a researcher now. Whenever you go to conduct your study, whether it be with a team that you're working with, students that you know, or just anybody, people you don't know, when you interact with them, they are going to be feeling evaluated. And when somebody feels evaluated, they act differently than when they aren't feeling evaluated. So just the pure act of evaluating them is going to change their response to questions or their, uh, their performance on a test than it would have if you weren't evaluating them in the first place. Ideally, we like to control things. That means we lim eliminate extraneous variables that have nothing to do with our study. Maybe we go into a lab so we don't have to test with environmental, envir environmental variables. But other things can't be controlled so well. I might not be able to control a person's, you know, the extent to which they adhere to a diet. I might not be able to control how much sleep they got the night before. I can't control how often they participate in physical activity, even though I ask them not to participate the 48 hours before they come to do my study. And then there's the final part in issues and measurement, and some of those I've already intimated. You, there are no perfect questionnaires. There is no perfect test. The agility t-test gives us some information about agility. The um, one, a 1RM one bench press gives us some idea about upper body strength, but it never gives us the whole picture. So as you're selecting your problem, and many of you I'm hoping have already selected a problem, or at least very close, a couple of things I want you to keep in mind, and I want you to think about the problem you have now and make sure that it fits all these criteria. First, workability. You're attempting to graduate probably in the next 12 months or so. If that's the case, are you working on a project that you can true that you can have the resources for? That means the you know, the money, the time, and graduate in time, or is this a project that would take you three or four years? Um, you really want to make sure, kind of check with the department, check with your advisor, check with me, you know, is this the type of project that you can do and actually graduate in time? The second part, critical mass. What critical mass has to deal with... Critical mass has to deal with the literature. So in critical mass, what we're talking about here is um, do you have enough lit to write? Your goal here by the end of this semester will be to write approximately a 25 to a 40 page ROL. And if there isn't enough lit to help you develop a good 25 to page to 40 page ROL, you're not going to have enough information to develop a good research question, which is really the goal of the review of lit. So critical mass is, do you have enough information to even develop the question that you need to? 
interest, so at this point we've got workability, critical mass, interest, you have to really like your topic. If you don't like your topic, you're going to have a problem. You're going to probably spend somewhere around 500 hours just this semester working on this project. There is a lot of writing. It takes a lot of time to write 20 to 40 pages. Plus, then you'll see at the end of this lecture just how much work you have to do. Um, then, after this class, you'll probably bet on spending another 500 to 1,000 hours. That's a lot of time on one topic, so in order to do so in a way that won't drive you absolutely up the wall, I strongly encourage you to make sure you pick a topic that you love. Now, theoretical and practical value, these are a little bit more important. So, theoretical is very important for those my students who are working towards their PhD because that's really going to help advance the literature. Practical value is pretty important at the master's and PhD level. Because um, what you're trying to do is m give some information to practitioners. To, and this is what's going to make your article publishable. Can you actually give, you know, based on the findings of your study, can you tell practitioners, here's something else I should think about doing? Alright, so when you're working on your topic, I want most of you are, all of you, I believe, are at the thesis level. So you're going to focus on how a thesis is higher than an independent study but lower than a dissertation. A thesis is a larger topic than an independent study. It's got more elaborate research design. It's usually, it can be publishable. It's not always publishable, but it can be publishable. And it should stem from a gap in the literature. You'll see how that differs from independent study, where it doesn't usually stem from a gap in the literature. Instead, it stems just from the interests. Dissertation is usually the pretty same, similar as a thesis. It's usually just much more complex. The review of lit is almost twice the size. It should have more participants, higher level analysis, more of a theoretical framework, and so on. So, a couple of things on some etiquette. You all are going to have to identify a committee. A committee consists of one chair, one content individual, and one stats professor. Your chair, for some of you, has already been defined. If not, it's going to be somebody predominantly in your program. Um, they have to be qualified to advise on your topic. To be a chair, you have to be a, have a doctorate, so they have to have doctor in front of their name or have um, to be a dissertation or a thesis chair. To be a content member, you do not have to have a doctorate, so you could be a professor. Um, they also have to be willing to be on your, you know, so not only do they have to have the knowledge, but they have to be willing to be on your project. Um, a majority of our faculty members do not have this as a part of their daily job. This is something additional that they do, and some of them might have five or ten theses that they're, you know, or more that they're on already. So when you go to ask somebody to be on your thesis, realize that they might say no and it's not personal. It has more to do with the fact that they probably already have too many obligations. You also need a stats and research professor. By taking this class with me, you are guaranteed that if you want me to be your stats and research professor, I'll say yes. Just by being my proposal design class, in my proposal design class. Other faculty mem members are options. At the moment, Dr. Sortier is an option. She is on a one-year contract, though, so I don't know if sh she'll be available for next year. Um, and Dr. Winters over in psychology, Dr. Liu in phys ed and health ed, these are all people who could be your stats professor. When thinking about these meetings, a couple of things. Make sure you make an appointment. Don't just always swing by to ask questions. Um, if you ever bring somebody a new copy of your paper, make sure you provide them with their old copy if they asked for it so they can make comparisons. Make sure you always have your references or bibliography included. Make sure you always do spell checks and proofread your paper. Don't give them something that isn't half thought out. And make sure your paper is in APA format. Us professors, we're all used to reading the paper in APA format, and if your formatting's wrong, it's just distracting. It's hard to actually focus on the content of your paper. So please make sure, and that's one of the major goals of this class, is to teach you APA format. Make sure that when you hand something to another professor that you have maintained that format and you are diligent to those details. As you are trying to think of a topic and narrowing down a topic, uh, one suggestion I have is to read research. Reading research will help you come up with questions. 
Become familiar with a few publications that contain pertinent research for your field. That might be the sports psychologist in psychology. It might be the psychological build or bulletin in psychology. It could be the journal of strength and conditioning research and strength and conditioning. It could be research quarterly for the exercise science in physical education and exercise science. These are all great journals for you to consider taking a look at. Read the paper like a practitioner. Focus predominantly on the introduction and discussion. Read the methods because it might give you ideas to your own method section and what you might do. Read the abstract first to see if the paper is actually worth your time. But if it is worth your time, consider that you're going to be reading most articles two or three times until you fully understand what it is. At this point, though, I don't want you to be too concerned about the statistics section. When you read the results section, some of it you'll understand and some of it might go over your head. That's okay. Most of you will be taking stats next semester and it'll be able to come a little easier. Make sure you're also critical and objective. What did they do wrong? What didn't they think of? It? Ask yourself those questions as you work through your paper, the papers. Now, what I've provided here are some components of quality research, and I want you to think of this as both ways to be critical of articles that you read, but also these are the these are the objectives of the paper that you need to submit, both at the end of this class for your proposal, but also when you try to submit for your defense. Make sure that you identify and delimit, a, or identification, delimitation, and permit. That means that you've appropriately identified the problem and you've defined the scope of the problem. Shown that you can search, review, and effectively write about the relevant literature. So you need to make sure you hit all of the key component components and write in a way that somebody can understand it and that you can build an argument for your hypothesis. Then, specify and define a testable hypothesis. Create a design and methodology that will actually test that hypothesis. Choose appropriate participants to test for and... Um, you know, pro appropriate sample to test for your hypothesis. Then, after proposal, you'll analyze the data, make sure, making sure you use appropriate statistical or data analysis techniques, and then finish off with discussing the meaning and implications of the findings in your discussion section. Now, this last little part, this is the what you're going to accomplish this semester. So, things that I want you to focus on here. You are going to, we're going to work on this backwards. going to start off with the first half of the semester, we work on the review of lit. Your first assignment is a 15-page writing sample. Eventually, you're going to work towards giving me a full review of lit. Then you'll go back and we'll work on Appendix A. Appendix A is when we start to identify the, the scope of your study and identify your hypotheses. Then we'll continue to work backwards towards the journal manuscript. This includes the introduction, which is usually five to eight pages. Um, a, method, a method section, which typically is participants measuring instruments, procedures, and statistical analysis, but that can differ based on your research design. So if you have a qualitative design, this is going to look different. And then you have ex these extra components I've checked off here. The, um, the title page, table of contents, an APA title page, a reference section, a bibliography, and then after proposal design and after you conduct your data analysis, you're going to write results and discussion that are going to help finish off your thesis. One of the things that can be really helpful is to get your hands on a thesis or dissertation. Now, the library has copies of them that you can use. Um, all you have to do is search on the library by books, and you can delimit it to SE theses, which also includes dissertations. And you might be able to find a thesis on a similar topic than you. You might also might be able to, you can either check it out or you might be able to download it. One major thing to recognize, though, theses and dissertations that are in the library might not be APA 6 edition, which is what you're being graded on. So, use it for ideas and recommendations only. Make sure that you focus on what I'm teaching you in class to make sure you have appropriate APA, and that's going to help your grade. All right, thank you for watching this video and coming to pre prepared to class. We'll review a little bit of this, come with questions, and I'll see you on Tuesday, February 3rd.